Hey guys, so, new video this time. I decided to do another Magic the Gathering altar because I feel like on this channel, the best thing that I'm gonna get done with altering is just to fully alter my pirate treasure token EDH deck. And I think I'm gonna get like 11 or 12 cards in. I think after this, I might just do a basic land montage thing where I kind of just take every single uh, mountain, every single swamp, and every single island and kind of just alter them all at once. Or maybe just all the islands together in one video, then all the mountains. Then all the swamps, or am I just- I don't know, but we're getting the entire EDH deck done on this channel at some point, excluding the cards I've already altered. But anyway, I decided to do Pull From Tomorrow, because I really like this card, it's saved my ass so many times when I am completely out of cards, because the deck really- it just dumps its hand too fast, because it produces a lot of generic mana, due to its uh, high- uh, artifact count, because it's not really a pirate tribal deck anymore, I, over the years it's kind of shifted into a mass artifact affinity kind of EDH deck, where it just uses artifacts to pump out as many artifacts as it can, and then wins via not only Revel and Riches, but also um, that stupid red dragon that wins if you have like 20 or more artifacts of the same name, and um, the Aether Revolt one, because mechanized production, it also wins through mechanized production, and just overall a lot of mana produced by artifacts. So normally I empty my hand out really quickly, so I use Pull From Tomorrow as a card that I mainly draw a lot of from when I need a whole turn to reload as fast as I can. But I didn't only want to do a border extension for this card because I feel like I should be moving up a little more in my skill level, and I was thinking about doing just a full art where I do the same thing that I did with the Guild of Lotus where I kind of just take the artwork and I make it fill up the entire page. Well, not page, but I make it fill up the entire text box and everything, but Pull From Tomorrow, although it's a very good card, it's not that popular of a card, so I decided to simply do a little quirky thing in the middle, where since War of the Spark just came out, and it had recently come out, I think the day I started recording this, I decided to make a portal from Amonkhet, where this, this card takes place in, and since the mage is pulling in mana from supposedly the future, I had it set so that the portal, that it, that little hourglass thing, in being replaced by a portal into the future, and that being the uh, ambush invasion of Ravnica by Bolas and his army. So, also spoilers, but honestly, like, who cares about spoilers about this anymore? Spoilers were announced a while ago, but as you see, I, when I laid the base coat down, I didn't only leave the base coat around the card, I also left the base coat in the center, because that's where the portal's gonna come in. I then focus on the color matching on the sky, which in this piece wasn't all that hard. The blues are very faded, very white, the clouds are very generic gray, whitish color. I added the plants in the buildings later on. The hardest part of this step was trying to get the paint to stick to the card, because I watered down my base coat very much, but I watered them down a bit too much in this one, and when you water down your acrylic paints too much and try to put a second coat before the bottom one's fully dry, it pulls, when you stroke with your brush, it actually pulls the paint up from the base coat that you laid in, which you can see at the bottom, well, on the right side of the card, but the bottom of the frame right now, where you see that little smudge that I, I'm currently painting over again. And once it happens, once you get that little smudge of base coat off, it's really hard for any future layers to actually properly get placed into the card. So that, that was a pain. I here tried adding more clouds just all over the top, just to make it seem not as empty. And then after this, I started putting the border on the portal, and I decided to go for a neon blue, dark blue, kind of lightning-esque border around it to try to kind of show them the magi magical magic, I guess, that's creating the portal. And um, I think it went well. I think after this, I just kind of just put a little like lightning white streak going through it. Yeah, I do that right now, to kind of just to show that it's ooh lightning magic or something like that. I don't know. I didn't know how else to make a portal that much. And after this, I decided to... I wanted to put something in the portal that would easily be able to identify where it is that the portal is coming from. So I made the sky as purple as I could, which you'll see right now. I made it very dark, very purple, very, very dark tones. Not only because uh, I think War of the Spark happens at nighttime, if I recall correctly from the video or from some of the cards. No, it doesn't happen at nighttime. It happens in during the... I think it's over the course of a whole day, I'm not sure. I just know that in the opening cinematic, it's nighttime when the portal opens and bolts attacks. It might either be nighttime or very, very early in the morning. I don't know, I didn't read the novel. I heard it was completely garbage, so I didn't read it. Anyway, so I wanted to do something that was very easily identifiable by a person just looking at the card from across the table. So I put in the purple to contrast with the very bright 
like tannish white blue tones of the original card, so I added in like the opposite colors, the very dark, eerie purple, purple flowers, just a lot of purple in there. Um, but I didn't only want to just put the sky, I wanted to put something that would symbolize Ravnica being attacked during War of the Spark. So I decided to put uh, Bolas' Citadel in black, which is a very easy shape to mimic. It's just kind of like a rectangle with a little triangle in the middle of it, a little wedge thing, which you'll see right now I'm painting over. So it looks like if that little magical line that the mage is pulling from is coming straight from the Citadel. Whether that's accurate or not, it probably isn't, but, you know, it looks cool, so we're gonna go with it. And Citadel, I kind of just made it a solid black color. And I, I didn't like the way just the Citadel that looked, so I wanted to add something a little more Bolus related. So I, I think I added in Bolus's horns right after this. I'm not sure if I did it right now or later. But the original base coat of purple didn't go in all the way, so I went back over it again with another coat of purple, which made it look a lot darker than it needed to be. It was a bit late to fix it at that point, so I just tried to add a little bit of highlights into the clouds. Uh, I'm not sure what I did after this. Let's see. I'm doing this on real time with you guys, watching myself paint again. The reason I do these videos the way I do them, where I like look at myself painting afterwards and recording my voice over it, is because it helps me notice what I do right or what I do wrong, and I kind of explore that with you guys. Here I practiced Bolus's horns on the side, and I just noticed it looks like a weird man onion with a goatee. But anyway, so I copied the horns over and I gave this little like, uh, I forgot what that stone in his head is called, but I made it white, kind of just to make it stand out. It's actually golden, like a bronze color, but I made it white just to have it stand out on the frame. I added a couple highlights to the clouds, kind of just made it a little more recognizable. Uh, if I would do anything different right now, I'd probably add a couple flashes of like a neon blue or very light blue to kind of show all the sparks coming into the citadel during the attack. But too late now. I might go back and fix it, I'm not sure. The color of the buildings around it was very hard to actually get right. And I kind of gave up after a while. I couldn't get the... the tan was fine. Like, you can see right now, the tan is fine. It's very believable level of tan. It's the underside color of that, like, very, very faded dark purple. Is it a purple? I don't know if it's a purple or dark tan. It's a purplish tan. I got it really, really close, and then I couldn't get it any closer than what I got it on the uh, right side of the card, the left side of frame right now. Everything else so far was pretty, pretty easy from there on. I kind of just color matched the tans of colors and just did a little bit of the highlights, a couple of the shadows using darker tans. Pretty good. Pretty enjoyable doing this. It wasn't that difficult of a piece, but then again, it didn't have that much detail, so there wasn't much to show. I didn't want to make the border around the buildings and the underside of the card too crowded or cluttered with details, because I wanted the main focus of the piece to be the portal leading into Ravnica. So if you're wondering why I didn't really do anything extra on the sides like I did in my um, hostage taker altar when I completely painted the side of the boat that she's standing on, it's because the focus was meant to be on the portal and not the surrounding buildings or steps. Also because the um, Amonkhet are, what's that word again? I can't believe I'm forgetting that word. Architecture, the, <laughs> the architecture found in Amonkhet is very geometric, but in a very confusing, annoying way. <laughs> Because everything is like a solid block and a wedge, or very sharp angles, which you would expect to be easy to draw, which it is, very easy to draw. Very difficult to color though, because you don't really know what to do. Because it's, it's like, there's no direct black lines or white lines, it's all just like a tan, and then a slightly lighter tan, or a slightly darker tan. It's very difficult to get those colors to contrast with each other enough to show the correct shading that was intended on the original card. So if you can see here on the left side, I, I, I didn't do it as good as I should have done. I, I just kind of went with the darker darker tans and just colored, not colored, but I painted the black lines into the original artwork to make them fit in a little more. Um, and then here I added the little trees on top of the buildings. I'm not exactly sure what kind of trees they are, but I like the way they looked. I kind of just went with a very uh, faded, like, dulled brown for the tree trunks and a very dulled light green, you know, like little desert colored trees, because it's, it's Space Egypt, we're in Space Egypt, it's where we are right now. And I like how the trees came out. After that, I just signed my name, and I finished the piece. 
looking back at it now, I probably fixed the bottom up a little bit. And yeah, probably fixed the bottom up, add the sparks flowing into bolus at the end. Maybe added a little more detail on the left side, but not too much. And probably fixed the line work on the steps on the left. And here is the final step in the altar where I kind of just scratch off with a wet toothpick all of the edges that I painted onto the frames of the cart. It's a very important step that makes your cart look a lot more professional. And hope you like this. Here's the card. See y'all next time. Love y'all.